Good morning, this is Pastor Hudson. I'm delighted to be with you today. And today I want to bring you a devotion entitled Making the Right Choice. Our text comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. I said in mine heart, God shall judge the wicked, for there's a time for every purpose and for every work. And Last spring, it was a 23-year-old woman who was driving her car through the Ontario town of Tobermory. It was enough familiar territory for her, so she dutifully following her GPS. Indeed, she was so intent on following the device that she didn't even notice that her car was headed straight for the Georgian Bay. So she drove down a boat launch and straight into the frigid water. Thankfully, she was managed to climb out and swim ashore, but sadly, she watched her bright red Yaris sink beneath the waves. In Manhattan, one man followed his GPS into a park where his car got stuck on a staircase. And in Europe, a 67-year-old Belgian was, woman was led remarkably astray by her GPS, turning what was supposed to be a nine-minute drive to Brussels into a day-long voyage into Germany and beyond. Perhaps you can sympathize with people who are led astray by a GPS that was less than accurate. All of us have received wrong directions from the guidance system called sin. When we follow its guidance, we always end up in the wrong places doing the wrong things. And sadly, though, so many people, they become lost for eternity and are never able to recover themselves to travel the right road. Thankfully, God has given us two very reliable guidance systems. One is his word and the other is his spirit, Romans 8 and 14. He stood there in front of the mirror and thought, I am a judge. And the thought actually overwhelmed him as he stood there and looked at the robe and he adjusted it. If the other court participants could only feel his stomach as it churned, if they could know his heart rate, if he is expected to make judgments that are both legal and balanced, he is expected to exercise discretion and prudence in following the law and seeking for justice. But you see, in the eternal courtroom, matters are far more significant than those determined in the earthly courtroom are weighed. You see, the souls of men are judged in this courtroom of eternity. Decisions of life and death are extended to encompass matters of heaven and of hell. The judge in this courtroom is not robed in a black, but in a white robe showing his righteousness. And this is none other than our Lord Jesus Christ, who sits and top this court. He knows who and what he is. He is the sovereign God. His judgments are true. They are righteous altogether. Psalms 19 and 9, he has never known a moment of unrighteous bias, Acts 10 and 34. Everything that he does is guided by perfect wisdom, Psalms 104 and verse 24. You see, God is a righteous judge. Among God's many immutable characteristics is his righteousness. It is not merely that all of his deeds are righteous on, or that all his words are righteous. He is in his very essence or his nature righteous. There is no uncleanness or corruptness in, corruption in him at all. You see, he is the perfect compass, affords him the moral compass he has, affords him the foundation to serve as the eternal judge and to do so flawlessly. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness, Psalms chapter 9 and verse 8. And that God allows his judgment to flow from his nature. Every decision he has ever made is righteous. Abraham rightly declared of him in Genesis 18 and 25, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? You see, our world is awash in immoral pluralism. We are daily assaulted with the idea that all opinions are equally valid, and each person's definition of morality is legitimate, as any others. No one, they say, has the right to declare what is wrong for someone else. The stated position of our age is there is no unwavering standard of what is wrong. Though such a mindset purportedly offers freedom from guilt, in reality it provides no such thing. Guilt is not feel a feeling, it is a fact. 
One can be guilty regardless of how he feels or about his actions. So in order to accurately determine one state, there absolutely must be a fixed point of moral reference, unchanging standard of what is wrong. God, the righteous judge, determines that alone. While many would attempt to complicate the matter, the truth is that anything that violates his moral code is wrong, 1 John 5 and 17. Any action or attitude that is contrary to his very nature is by definition very wrong. And of all such unrighteousness is morally offensive to him, Deuteronomy 22 and verse 25, verse 16. You see, he determines what is right. It is God's nature. It delineates what is wrong. So too he does. He determines what is right by drawing a moral boundary that separates the unholy from the holy. God defines both. Those who resist God's right to provide such definition miss the fact that if there is no right, then there is no wrong whatsoever. Nothing, no matter how irreprehensible, can rationally be declared off limits if there is not a standard of what is right. The abuse of a child, how can one say this is morally wrong unless he accepts that some benchmark has been set? Unless there is an eternal yardstick against which to measure it, how can one say that murder, maybe rape, or any other action is wicked? Having cast away the touchstone of God's righteousness, we live in a world that offers moral compa compassion for a fish caught from a lake, from a baby that would be ripped from the womb. You see, God does provide the definition, though, of what is right and what is found in his word, Psalms 19, verse 7 through 11. You see, in God's laws and God's statutes, there are both non-arbitrary definition of what is right and the promise of a blessed life when we live by it. In our earthly judicial system, ignorance of the law is no excuse for breaking it. A natural defendant cannot simply claim that he did not know his actions were illegal and thereby escape punishment. Similarly, a man before God will stand, and he will stand there without excuse because God's word has already established the criteria by which he will be judged. He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. You see, there can be no debate about what is actually good. That has already been established by God, and God already has made that judgment. You see, God gave us the ability to make wise judgment, and you see, God will judge each of us one day. Until that time, we are the given the right and the responsibility to judge ourselves. In First Second Corinthians 13 and 5, the Bible says, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith and prove your own selves. We face a myriad of daily decisions, though, regarding our spiritual walk that really demand right judgment. We are not on our own, though, however, as God's Spirit will lead us and guide us in this process. He will lead us in paths of righteousness, Psalms 23 and verse 3. Left to our own discretion, we would never make wise decisions or wise judgments. All the ways of a man, the Bible says, are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits, Proverbs 16 and 2. Our inability to evaluate rightly our ways, it demands that we yield to the voice of God in our life, and he will assist us in making wise judgments. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I'm praying today for somebody, God. I'm praying for those that are listening to this devotion, God, that they will be strengthened to make the right choices and the right decisions, and that your hand will be upon them. You will lead them. You will guide them. You will bless them, Lord Jesus, and they will make right decisions by your guidance and by your counsel and by that of your word. I thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day in Christ, and we'll complete this devotion tomorrow. Until the meantime, remember, his word and his spirit will help you make right decisions.